Yo, yo, yo. I'm in a great mood. I hope you are too. This is a two rock traditional clean. And this is my Amp Builder Reacts video to the two rock traditional clean. Now, if you followed any bit of my channel, you're going to know I'm a big John Mayer fan. And the and I'm a big John Mayer like equipment and amplifier fan. I reversed engineered a two rock JM SIG with a bunch of help from uh, online stuff and uh, interactions with a real one one day. And forever grateful for all those who publish information about it. And in front of me is a two rock traditional clean uh, made in 2020. So it's very new. And I'm going to talk about it and what I see, what I observe, what are some interesting little tidbits. Now, this is not a video about what the differences are between this and a JM SIG, although I can maybe point some things out. Uh, but what I am going to tell you is what I see directly in front of me. So this is the post-classic tone um, era, I guess, if you will. And I believe, I don't actually don't know who, if you look on the bottom, there is some markings. It's fairly vague, though, what this is. They look like a traditionally um, made transformer. Oh, where's the markings on this one? Here we go. Oh, Pacific Transformers. Actually, you know what? I do remember that now. So there's the model code for Pacific Transformers there. This one's going to be kind of hard to see, but you can sort of see it now. Um, the tubes that they chose is two, uh, TAD 6L6 WGGC. These are my personal favorite um, tubes, so that's really cool. These switches are super nice. They are NKK switches, and I don't have it plugged in, so don't get worried. And this thing is discharged. I love the feel of this switch. And you can see on the inside it's an NKK. Uh, there's a model number. So real nice. The the high and low power switch is interesting. I forgot what they call this uh, specific technique for half power. It's not simply removing two tubes like you may see with other brands are doing something else in there the rectifier on the side here is is new to me from traditional two rock stuff but i've seen it in old fenders where they take you know basically six rect uh, rectifier diodes and they string them together like the old fenders used to do so kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, when I did measure this amp compared to my JM SIG, I think this transformer might be a 340, 0, 340, uh, sorry, 345, 0, 345 output on these red wires because the voltage of B plus was around 450 volts um, compared to three, or sorry, 436 volts on my JM SIG. Um, so I guess I am talking a little bit about the comparisons and the differences. Here is the sort of anti-pop when you turn off the standby uh, that prevents the pop. There is, I believe, a resistor and diode or LED pair in this little bracket that looks custom made. It's kind of cool. Um, never have to replace in theory. The lamp and that goes right up to the heater wire here which is using sort of like the traditional fender 100 ohm virtual center tap way of doing things um, i'm going to guess that these other wires here are for international hookups or different um, style hookups like two rock used to do all their wire it looks like they're switching over to this usa brand um, solid core wire so mainly this amp is built with solid core wire um, across so I th I think that's going to increase the rigidity of this some 
builders do not like solid core. I mean, you can see it's pretty sturdy. There's an advantage of solid core in that it doesn't move, which means the microphonics, you're not going to get like as much as stranded wire by using solid core. Um, and also they look really pretty. They stay in place, as you can see. Um, and stranded wire has the advantage of it. It will, it will take and flex a little bit more over time. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I prefer like a really, like a tinned stranded, which I guess in turn turns it into solid core. <laughs> so it's really kind of whatever your building preferences. I have nothing against the way that they're doing it. It looks like they might be even simplifying by going with one single vendor, one single model type of wire. Uh, maybe it's cheaper in the end. But you can still, you know, see that the, even the the heater wires are tucked down real nice. Um, this is a very clean amp, super clean amp. Um, see some local negative feedback over here. It looks like they're using one side of the tube for this particular part here. Um, the local negative feedback over here is very reminiscent of a JM Sig and even this resistor pair. So. There's definitely a lot of things that are shared between the two. Um, up here we have some capacitors, and what they did this time around is that they actually showed the values on the outside, which is kind of nice uh, for anyone that's repairing it uh, down the road if they need to. These resistors are Coa Spears, half watt, and if you use my bomb, or if you look at my... Uh, JM SIG, that's just, that's basically what I found that they use, and I started using them and recommending them for other folks who are building amps. Um, seems pretty neat. Here's a FET drag resistor. I believe that's a 150K. That sort of loads down and mimics a FET uh, input. Some, some amps have, you'll see it on this side, like a, a field effect transistor. Um, circuit for and then an extra input over here or maybe even a switch with a relay but this is very simplified so you're not gonna you don't see any of that but for the tone you can just add a uh, 150k resistor here and then get that uh, voltage down to simulate the FET being in play so that's kind of neat um, the pots are measured as such. They did their high, low, uh, 15. I, 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 I measured exactly 100K, but that's in circuit. So maybe this 15 is actually a little bit higher. Oops. Maybe this 15 is actually higher. Um, it looks like we have 330, or yeah, 330 picofarad here. The normal deep switch that you see everywhere else. This amp has a presence pot, not a contour. Um, so that's a difference between this and the JM SIG. Heck, why not? I'm just going for it. I'm just talking about what the differences are. Um, f and very cool, very cool. Nishikan. And it looks like Nishikan for the cathode uh, bypass capacitors. Again, more, basically, I don't think I see anything else other than well, I don't know what brand these are. Um, it's for the local negative feedback. But it looks like everything is pretty much centralized around Koa Spear. Uh, I don't know what brand these are, but they look like run-of-the-mill metal oxide resistors. Um, I don't know what brand these local negative feedback capacitors are. They look pretty generic to me, so I'm sure any of them are, are good. We're getting back into sort of what I observe, Two Rock has their own sort of label on these uh, resistors or capacitors. Sorry, these are 600 volts. You're gonna, you're gonna look at everything else is 400 volts. Um, I believe that they are seven one rebranded uh, Sprag or sorry, Cornell Dubliner or CD. Um, 715P and 400 volts across the way. 
So on the reverb, interestingly, they are using isolation jacks, which is cool. Um, really great masking. So they're, they're powder coating, which is cool. Also, this, this is powder coat. There's like a, a shine to it. You see the little flake in the powder? It's beautiful. Um, whereas like the other ones are just like a, a flat black. So that's a differentiator. The aluminum looks really nice, high quality. Uh, aluminum jack, really nice jack for uh, switching, making that a uh, grounded ground input when it's not plugged in. So yeah, really cool stuff in Ishikan, cathode bypass caps if I didn't mention that before. Uh, really cool stuff going on here. Um, really evolved and it looks like they standardized on, on a lot of things. Which is nice. So this is not meant to be a crazy comparison of anything. It's just more or less my reaction after opening up a two rock traditional clean for my and your enjoyment and pleasure. Looks like V1 has these... Uh, I believe, R, yeah, RN65D plate load resistors. And look, V1 here has the plate load, uh, or sorry, cathode bypass. Or these are actually cathode resistors. Are also military spec RN60D. Just a, I think, quarter watt, hence the size. But they, they're really overrated. Sorry, underrated. They're, they can handle a lot more than that. So that's a reminiscent of what we see in the JM SIG as well. So there's a lot of things that are shared. That I will say that when I turn this amp on and I play it, it's definitely different than the JM SIG. So it's similar in a lot of ways, but different uh, more in the reverb than anything else. Same loudness, same everything else. So... If you like what you see and want more of these things, uh, give me a thumbs up, comment below. I don't know, based on anyone's feedback, if you want more of this or you want me to stop or whatever. I may just keep on doing them regardless because I feel like these are neat. And if anyone else out there enjoys this as much as I do, then that's a, that's a win. That's worth it for me. So... Enjoy. I hope to see you guys later. And this tube right here is just covering up a serial number and such. It will not, it did not come installed from the factory. I will remove that quickly after this video so I don't forget it.